She's tagged the grand dame of Sri Lankan fashion who keeps abreast of fashion trends all over the world. She prides herself of having sold her first signature creations to eminent personalities such as Libyan leader Colonel Gaddafi. With no formal qualification to support her resume, she asserts that the wealth of knowledge one acquires through practical life experience is far more valuable. The beginning of Yolanda Aluihara's career on a commercial scale began in the 70s when a prominent shop owner at that time offered to sell her products in his shop. She secured her first contact in the world of international fashion when she was invited to attend the Frankfurt International Trade Fair in 1979. She has been actively involved in many other international trade fairs. Yolanda has also won the Silver Award in the Medium category for the Woman Entrepreneur of the Year 2000 and the Professional Woman of the Year 2000 conducted by the Women's Chamber of Industry and Commerce. She exports her signature garments to Spain, Switzerland, Germany, France, the United Kingdom and the United States of America. It all began with a wall hanging and a meager hundred rupees. In the present day, Yolan collection is a brand synonymous with sophistication and originality, catering to an affluent niche. And for Yolanda Aluihare, it all began here at home. You started with hundred rupees. And today, Yolan Collection is, I think, uh, one of the most outstanding businesses in Sri Lanka. And uh, your annual turnover is about how much? <laughs> <laughs> Roughly about 30 million rupees. 30 million rupees. Yeah. Tell us, how did you do this? I mean, with 100 rupees in your pocket, you just ventured out into a man's world, the business world, and you've been successful. That is, you know, I started with 100 rupees. Uh, trying to organize my business and uh, to do the batik work and then I realized I have to be very very careful in how I use my monies. When I sold an item, I never spent that money on myself or my children. I kept it and I pur purchased the raw materials that I needed. So like that, I fed everything, the monies that I got into my business and that's how I started it. Whereas some people, when they get 100 rupees, they try to spend 200 rupees. So if you have that idea, I don't think you'll be a successful businesswoman. Right. I read an article, uh, some, something printed back in 1988. I think you have gone to one of the conferences in Dubai or somewhere. And then the, the, the writer had described you as a tiny dynamo-like woman. Why? Because I am very, sort of whatever I do, I am very sort of fast in my, even in my movement. And at that time, I just, had just started the business and I was very, very shy of the camera. Right. And they wanted me to model because there was no model. Mm -hmm. So I wore one of my blouses and I was turning and twisting and then suddenly they asked me, uh, have you got any children? Then I said, yeah. And my son is, you know, he's about 10, 15 years old at that time. Then they got a shock and they couldn't believe it. That's why they called me that. Something, a lesson that uh, you can impart from your life story. I know, actually looking at my life story, I think it's a good example for everybody because I didn't have much qualifications. I got married young and then for me to be like this today is something great. You know, what I feel is now uh, most of the women, they just like to stay at home and not do anything. Because I told you, every woman has a hidden talent and they have to expedite what this talent is and um, develop it into either a hobby or a business. And so that you earn your own money. At least you earn a little bit of pocket money where you don't have to go and ask for every penny from your husband. Even to, if you want to buy a pair of shoes, you don't need to go to your husband when you have your own money. So, I mean, also I feel that the men also respect you. And you feel so happy, you know, I don't have to beg for anything. And if I feel something is nice and when I go shopping, I don't have to ask anybody. And at the same time, I feel whenever you earn money and also that you should have a little bit to give the poor. That is one of my main policies. And so that the others also will benefit from what I have earned. When we were talking before, you said when you began the business, uh, you didn't have formal qualification with regard to the field. As I left school, I got married. 
and I didn't get an opportunity to continue my studies. And th that's how I started this uh, hobby and it became a business. What I feel is, that I told you, there is always in a person, there is a hidden talent. It's up to you to find out what that talent in what you can do and uh, go ahead with it. And I never went to the university and studied uh, fashion designing or I never did a diploma in sewing, nothing. It's just that sheer hard work that I'm today like this. You have made your hobby into a multi-million rupee earning business today. Talking about hobbies, um, building houses, I mean not building houses, designing houses is another hobby of yours. How did this architectural streak come in? That is because I love, love uh, to see beautiful houses, beautiful architecture and I have travelled a lot. And whenever I travel, I take the camera and I want to see beautiful churches, houses and then I had a flair for designing also. And I have built about four or five houses where I designed on my own and I had a lot of problems working with the professional architects. Sometimes I used to get a architect who had just passed out and that's how I work. And I love beauty, you know, it's in me. It's my second hobby, designing houses. I get inspired by nature's beauty.